And unfortunately now, because of evangelicals, we are in a fight for our democracy. I mean, that is a daggone shame that we are in a fight for our democracy because of the evangelicals decided to put us in this situation when they could have took care of it long ago. This is crazy. Stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to pose a question and I want to see what you guys think. I remember hearing from a family member that Donald Trump had met with a group of faith leaders and he had become a Christian. And we needed to view him, even though he has this horrible, morally depraved past, um, we need to view him as a King Cyrus. President Trump will be like Cyrus. Trump has the Cyrus anointing. God was raising him up like Cyrus. The point being that Donald Trump is going to be this pagan king that God is going to use to rebuild the America that is crumbling. I really don't think we can underestimate how powerful that was for a certain segment of the Christian community. You feel like you're participating in, you know, in the prophecies and that something big is going to happen. So for for part of the community, the, the support became not just hold your nose, but like a, a rapid encouragement and excitement about him. Our mission is to champion the pastors of America for the transformation of America. Correct to say, the truth is this, America was founded as a Christian nation, and our success as a nation depends upon our fidelity to God's word. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk that's not in the Constitution, it was in a stinking letter, and it means nothing like what they say it does. It's real and it is horrific. And yes, we know other faith groups are also being persecuted, but Christians have a giant X on their back. The notions that evangelicals or the religious right is aggrieved in this country is, uh, on the face of it, I think is, is, uh, is preposterous. I think a case can be made that these people, in fact, are the aggressors. They're the ones who are trying to impose their values, their religious convictions, on the remainder of society. They're actually demanding a license to discriminate against those of whom they disapprove, and they're asking for an ability to override the law when it conflicts with their religious beliefs. Sounding the alarm on the fading power of evangelical Christianity in America. A recent study from Arizona Christian University reveals that only 10% of American adults identify as evangelical, a figure significantly lower than previous estimates. It also shows those who do identify as Christian often embracing a watered-down version of their faith. A growing trend is leading many evangelicals to abandon traditional beliefs in favor of a blended religious worldview. And as you can see, we got a big problem. You know, I showed you there a couple of clips of Robert Jeffress and him claiming that America was founded as a Christian nation and having this argument like a Christians are under this great attack that people are being dragged out to the streets, basically, and beheaded because of their faith. And then, you know, I, I, I had to show you the danger that we are in in society where people have want nothing to do with Christianity anymore. It's, it's churches are failing in a major way. But before we go any further, for those of you that's been following me for a while, I got the notes, I got the notes. This is more so a very serious message. I mean, I may have to do a, maybe another message or two because I couldn't get everything I wanted in for this message without it being too long. And I have down on here, you know, evangelicals, as we've been talking for a while, we, they've been trying to turn this nation for a long time, turn things into a theocracy for many years. Welcome to the Trump 2024 convention, brought to you by Project 2025. This week in the horrible city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you'll see the best of the Trump Project 2025 party. It's a bold vision for a bright future. 
With Trump, Project 2025. You'll love how new tariffs will make everything more expensive and set off runaway inflation. We know you'll appreciate paying for the big tax cut our struggling billionaires need. When you seniors are done freeloading, check out Project 2025's plan to end Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. So get out of that nursing home bed and get back to work. And ladies, this convention has so much in store for you. With Project 2025, you'll learn how good you'll have it in the kitchen. Girls, if your marriage isn't working out, you'll need Project 2025's helpful tips to keep the romance alive, even if he's abusive. Because we're getting rid of divorce, and we're going to criminalize birth control. And minorities, well, you didn't need those silly voting rights anyway. For you Jews, Muslims, Mormons, and other fake religions, you'll get a head start on learning America is a Christian nation. Project 2025 is Donald Trump's plan for your future, and it couldn't be any brighter. Project 2025 Bright Future Guarantee applies to white evangelical Christian men only. Other conditions may apply. Offer not valid in a functioning republic. And as you can see from the intro where they were talking about this King Cyrus thing, where they anointed Trump as King Cyrus. Uh, and, and, and thinking that this is some holy style war. It's going to be a new day. And MAGA will run things. They're going to know that MAGA is not only ascendant, MAGA is in charge. President Trump will have a miracle second term. He is the one that God's going to put his hands on. God says, I'm going to flip this thing, and we haven't seen anything yet, but it's coming. We're not crazy. They're crazy. And justice will be served, says your God. This is far from being over. And nothing will stop me from my plan and putting my son, Donald Trump, back in that White House. All of this is culminating in Donald Trump getting his second term of presence. It has to. I hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound of victory. Make America great again. That's what the Bible says. That is spiritual warfare. We'll take it by force. This is war. Let me tell you something. You ain't seen an insurrection on this nation and for the rest of the world that they have went down this rabbit hole of delusion to where many evangelicals in the past, including pastors, all of the ones that we that you see in the thumbnail on more. There's Dr. Dobson. I mean, there's so many more others that have been in the forefront of pushing this nonsense of some false a, 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 a theology that they then came up with. And I have on here that they've been trying to do this. And as you can just saw in that article, that's that, that I mean, that um, thumb uh, video rather in the video with the project 30, uh, 2025, where this is real and people could try to set up and say, it's not, it's real. And we'll get to that in another video or so. The, the proof is there. It's real. And I have on here, as that Cyrus craps laid this foundation and all of this other stuff, in comes Jerry Falwell, one of the first major players to put Mr. Trump out in the forefront, put him out. And a lot of people felt like, wait a minute, no, no, no. And this is the guy, the disgruntled that had to resign, as you can see here, where he was the pool boy was having sex with his wife while he's filming this stuff. And he's just totally out of control, hanging out at nightclubs. And and then you see the picture here of him with the uh, pants zipper down with a drink in his hand with some other woman on a yacht or some crap. I mean, and he, how, how ironic, once again, what has happened, we know that Trump has been this playboy and things all over the years, and we, we won't get into that. But how ironic, from a Christian university, my alma mater, I graduated from Liberty University, as far as with my bachelor's in religion and uh, counseling, and how he sat there and he pushed this guy amongst people, and then all of a sudden he gets anointed. Okay, get you get past that. But we know what happened on leading up through them years leading up to 2020 and then what happened when he tried to steal 
steal the election and re still refuses to consider. He's a danger to our democracy. I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. There's nothing wrong with saying that you've recalculated. And th there's the evidence there. And I have one there. You know, this, because of these pastors, Pastor Jeffers and, and, and Franklin Graham's and all, even Franklin Graham. Franklin Graham is foolish. He sat there during the 2020 election, met, said and said, oh, I, well, I tend to believe him that it, it may have been stolen. I mean, are you kidding me? The discernment, the discernment of this man. I mean, don't get me started on Franklin Graham and all of, all of these, Tony Perk, all of these people. But that came out of Franklin Graham's mouth. I mean, that's exactly what he said. And then we get here, it says, uh, yeah, pastors, because of these people, where you saw in the beginning, Robert Jeffers standing in a bullpen, talking about America's founded as a Christian nation, which is a big lie that we continue to talk about. If you continue to think that, you need to, I, I, you need to get in some type of a educational program so you can learn the history of America, and you will quit, and these people that you're talking about, these founding fathers, you need to dive deeper. I, but you know, But you know what it is? A lot of you don't want to dive deeper. You don't care. And we'll talk about that in a second. But people have come under a strong delusion in such a way that this, uh, this chaos because of their candidate that they did not, because they're trying to force their views onto everybody. A per, as we talk about a perverted view of Christianity that they're willing to do it at all costs. They don't care about the rest of society because they want this theocracy. They want it. They want to try to bring about God's kingdom now. They want to do it now. They don't want to wait on the Lord no more. And I have on here that because these people, Franklin Graham, all of these people, Tony Perkins, Robert Jeffers, and any other evangelical, evangelical pastor in America, and anywhere other evangelicals that are sitting in the pulpits that go, I mean, sitting in the congregations and going along with this, they're either... Satan has captured the minds of these folks I have down on here, or you don't even care or, uh, uh, or so, or want to uh, acknowledge that what the courts have ruled about the election stuff. So it's, 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 it's one or the other, which makes, which, which it comes to the question of, which means you either believe Trump over everything else, and we're going to get a little more into that in another video, possibly. But as you know, as I kind of bring this down, I don't want this video to be too long. But I'm gonna tell. I don't know if you ever heard of this uh, uh, serial killer, Coral Eugene Watts, the Sunday morning slasher. As you can see him right here, this guy would go around. He wouldn't rape the women or do anything. He might stab you with a screwdriver, or an ice pick, run up to you, slice your throat drown you. I mean, it, the way that this guy was running around Michigan and, uh, and, and on, I think he was down in Texas and on the, just killing people and the police couldn't put their finger quite on it. Uh, uh, but they were suspicious of him, but everywhere he went, bodies ended up missing. It's believed he was convicted of like 13 murders or somewhere in there, but it's believed that there's somewhere between 80 or, or more because the guy was just crazy and insane and he's running around stabbing these women, this, that, and that. And, and, and one of the things that he did was he took a plea deal because they really didn't have evidence uh, 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 as far as he tried to, when they caught him, he was trying to drown a woman or something. And and it's, it's confusing the laws back then, but they couldn't nail him the way that they wanted to nail him. So he was able to get all of these days for good behavior in prison. And like in 2005 or six, somewhere in there, he was scheduled to be released. And all of a sudden, the prosecution of the community is like, no, you know, they're coming to outrage. We cannot let this man out at all costs. So they try to figure up a way. We got to figure out something. There was a whole lot of missing cases out here. And they went back to like a uh, when a guy had called in and gave a, a account. Uh, Joseph Foyer, John Foyer or something, he said he saw a woman being stabbed outside of a her, her, Helen Dutcher, as you see right here. This woman was being stabbed. I think she had just got, she was a waitress or something that got off work and saw a guy stabbing her. And, and she, he called the police or something and this got tucked away. Did, and what you see here is the um, uh, sketch 
That's the sketch that they had that he said he saw from a window a hundred yards away. It was like a hundred yards. It was something very, it was a, a hundred yards, hundred feet, something. It was a way uh, where he saw uh, uh, him supposedly stabbing in the dark with only a street light. And I remember watching that trial live on court TV and, it, and um, Coral Eugene Ross had a heck of a de public defender. The public defender did an excellent job. I mean, everyone commended for what he had. But, you know, he didn't go out there in the dark, though, to try to show the jury. Could you, can you identify somebody in the dark from 100 yards away like that and, and things? And uh, But he showed 100 yards of how, he, you know, how sure can you be of identifying somebody and things like that. There was no DNA. There was nothing. But he got convicted off of that one eyewitness testimony. And then he went on to, they hit him with another charge thereafter in 2007, like in the summer of 2007. He was convicted, sentenced to life uh, on both of them charges with no parole. In July of September 2007, I mean, not July, September of 2007, he died of prostate cancer. So he had that cancer in his system throughout that, all that time. And he only died just a few months after being sentenced to life with no parole. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that he was convicted off of eyewitness, one eyewitness in the dark from a distance. Just because, yeah, the likelihood of someone being stabbed and things like that might have been him. And the point I'm trying to make, and we could get into that in another video, you got all of this evidence against this person that Mr. Trump that people have seen evangelicals have seen that they've had the courts they've had people in administration they've had all of these various peoples and things and all of that but yet no he, he he's he's anointed by God no he's the one they don't want to believe and I'm like this is ridiculous this is what you talk about cultic and all of that and when you had during the primaries that you didn't even have to get this far. You didn't have to get this far in 16. You could have stopped in the 16 and didn't even have to go down that road. That's a whole different message as well. But what I have in here as I close it, you know, just think about all of that. Many people that's been convicted over some of the more simplest things. I mean, or, or more, uh, I mean, more, I mean, not the simplest things, but some of the things where it's like, okay, uh, uh, your times didn't match up, this, that, or that, a uh, 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 witness saw you there, or, or just like this guy seeing somebody in the dark uh, from 100 yards away and was able to get convicted on that. I mean, but yet you still stand. See, this is the destruction and the deception that the devil has put inside of the church in such a way where it's caused so much turmoil. And I have on here, this right here makes me wonder about these pastors that we talked about, the Robert Jeffers and Franklin Graham, Tony Perkins, and all of the other pastors in the nation and anybody else that sets under them that continue to subscribe to this, makes me wonder I have on here how can you really believe I have on here? This is the question. How can you really believe that you love a Jesus, that you believe in a Jesus that you have never seen and, and claim you love and trust him? How? And, and, but yet you trust something coming out of this man's mouth, Mr. Trump's mouth more than anything else. How? That's the question of the day. That is the question of the day. I would like to know, do these folks really love, and love Jesus like they claim? Do they really believe in him like they claim? That's a big question. That is a big question. And that's the question that must be answered and fixed because the church is in total disarray and because of this man, and this is why I harp on this. I did not, don't want to have to harp on it and things like that. But there's so many people being destroyed.
because they believe some of the more delusional things that I can't even, I don't have enough time to put in the video, this particular video, because there's some new things that I want to show you. That's even, I mean, this, the, the madness and the craziness continue amongst pastors and evangelicals. So we'll talk about it maybe more a little in the future there. But I wanted to show you because I go out and share you with you some scripture that I'm going to share with you because that's my next question that I have for these people as well that stand by this stuff. We've got some scriptures that we we want to ask them. There's a scripture that stood out and it's something that I'm going to I want to ask in an upcoming video. So that's all I have. Evangelism for God's channel where we take the uh, talk about issues the church run away from, take the devil head on, punch him right up between the chops. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.